There are tons of different types of farms in Minecraft. There's big farms, small farms, and I don't even know what type of farm this is. But there's also farms that are so powerful that require you to literally break the game just to build them. And I'm gonna be building every single one. So with that being said, the first farm is a nether portal block farm. And this farm actually requires us to go to an older bedrock version. Then if I make this janky looking contraption and use a silk touch shovel, you can see that can farm an infinite amount of nether portal blocks. And with that farm done, it's a good time to mention that as the video progresses, the farms are going to continuously get harder and harder. Even building farms that require me to literally break the game just to build them. So with that being said, let's get to work on the next farm, which is a lightning powered gold farm. And the base of it's actually pretty simple. So let's build it. And now that I'm done with that, I just need to get some monster spawners, which you'll see why in a bit. So to get them, we first got to go to beta 1.9 pre-release 4. And now I need a silk touch pickaxe because in this version, you could actually mine spawners. So let's start by getting some basic materials. Some diamonds, which I totally didn't do. And now comes the hard part, which is actually getting silk touch on the pickaxe. You see, in this version, there's no good XP farms, meaning the best I got is killing these silverfish. And let me tell you, killing all these silverfish took a very, very, very long time. But now that I got all the XP, I just need to choose a random enchantment and hope it's silk touch. Are you serious right now, bro? Well, I guess it's back to doing this for the next few hours. Okay, and now that we actually got a Silk Touch pickaxe, I should be able to mine the spawner. Now, I'm just gonna dupe it, since getting 900 would literally be impossible. Next, I'm gonna use this program called MCA Selector to transfer the spawners back to my main world. And now, before I place them down, I need to downgrade my world to 1.19, since the spawners used to default to pigs in this version. And finally, last but not least, I need a channeling trident. However, I kind of don't got a channeling trident, so I think you know what time it's for. Okay, and now that I got the trident, I just need to throw it onto this lightning rod. Wait for it to thunderstorm. And the way this farm works is the spawners spawn pigs onto these grass platforms. Then, using the water stream, all the pigs will get sent up into a room where the channeling trident turns them into zombie pigmen and eventually kills them. Then, all the gold ends up storing itself in all these chests. And with that being said, the farm is complete. And now with that farm complete, it's time to move on to the last easy one, which is an illegal villager trading hub. And just like any other build, we gotta design it is what i would normally say but i kind of suck at building so i'm just gonna permanently borrow the design from my friend lucid which i'm sure he won't mind now with that complete hey, is that my villager trading hall um no Now, I just need to get the villagers. The first one being a villager that sells the most illegal item in the game. And to get it, we first gotta go to the one block at a time update. And to say this update's a bit weird is an understatement, since as you can see, I have two arms and I can pick up any block. But that's enough dilly dallying. Let's start getting the villager, which requires me to find a naturally spawning crafting table. And after a bit of searching, I found one. So now I just need to make a barrel and throw it onto the villager. Then, using the same map I used earlier, I can transfer the villager to my main world. And if you're wondering what he sells, he sells air. But I also just realized you need air to buy air. So since he won't give me his air, I'm gonna take it by force. <laughs> And now, as you can see, I'm still missing 19 villagers. So to fill them up, I'm going back to the one block at a time update. And the reason we're back is because in this version, you can actually stack mobs. For example, if I grab two sheep, I now have a sheep riding a sheep. So using the same mechanic, I'm now going to get a stacked villager, a villager riding a villager while riding a villager, a villager on the cat, chicken, cow, and finally, a villager riding a sheep. And after transferring them back to the main world, I'm now only missing 10 villagers. So to fill up these last 10 spots, 
boss, I'm gonna get some villagers that I bet you've never even heard of. So to get the first one, I first have to make a really long railway that leads to a jungle biome. Then I need to transfer two villagers there. And after they pop out a baby, you'll see that's actually a jungle villager instead of a normal one. So now I just need to build an extremely long railway to take him back to the villager trading hall. And now that I got that villager trapped, I just need to get the last variation, which requires me to kidnap and take two villagers to a swamp biome. And after they've popped out a baby, we now have a swamp villager, which is impossible to get naturally. Also, I forgot to mention that I got five of each villager. So with that being said, the trading hall is complete. And with the trading hall complete, we can now move on to the medium difficulty farms, which there's actually three of. And the first one actually requires me to go back to Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Also, the farm requires me to have access to an end gateway portal, which means we got to beat the game. So let's start by getting some basic materials, making a nether portal, getting ender pearls, finding a fortress, getting some blaze rods, finding the stronghold, and finally killing the ender dragon. And now that we beat the game, I just got to find the end gateway. And before I make the farm, I'm actually going to get an elytra since I'm not trying to fall into the void and die. So now to make the farm, I just need to make this simple redstone contraption. And the way this farm works is the contraption sends sand into an end gateway. And for some reason, doing that in this specific bedrock version will convert the sand into literally any block in the game. Even illegal ones like border blocks, light blocks, and much, much more. So with that being said, I'm going to use the farm for 30 minutes and see what I get. And after 30 minutes, I got some border blocks, blue flames, and water. And while they're cool, I sadly can't take them back with me since they don't exist in Java Edition. So with that being said, let's go back to Java Edition and start working on the next farm. And this is by far the craziest farm I've ever worked on because it's the fastest XP farm to ever exist, which can get you from level 0 to 1000 in less than 5 minutes. And to prove this, I'm gonna be getting rid of all my levels. So let's just die real quick. Okay, and now that I got rid of all my levels, I just need to build the farm. Anyways, to actually get rid of my levels, I'm just going to be spending them on random enchantments, which as you can assume took a very long time, but I eventually got rid of all my levels. Okay, and now with that done, I'm going to start working on the farm, which requires me to collect 100,000 cactus. And I know it sounds weird saying I need cactus to get XP, but trust me, you'll see why in a little bit. So with that being said, I'm going to be building a cactus farm since getting it manually would take way too long. And the only material I'm actually missing is cactus. Huh? Who? Who would have guessed? Anyways, while I spend the next few hours getting all this cactus, you can enjoy this 5 second time lapse. Okay, and now that I got all the materials, I'm gonna start building the farm. And as you can see, it's really, really, really big. But now that the farm is complete, I just need to AFK it for about 10 hours, which I'm just gonna do overnight. Okay, and now that I got the 100,000 cactus, the next step to building this farm is getting eight glitched shulker boxes. And surprisingly, they're not even that hard to obtain. So to start, we need to get some materials to make an update suppressor. And basically what an update suppressor does, it forces blocks in game to skip updates. For example, we all know if we make a nether portal, then destroy a block, the nether portal will just break. However, if we connect this machine to the nether portal using some rails and then break a block, only that certain block will break instead of the whole portal. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing, but with a shulker box. And now with that out of the way, we can finally start building the machine. And to make it, I'm actually going to first take off all my gear, then put it in a chest and fly pretty far away from my base. Because since I'm downgrading my world, I don't want anything to get corrupted or deleted. Okay, and now that I've downgraded, I'm going to build the machine. And to show how easy it is, I'm going to do it in one take. So first off, I'm going to place a composter down, then add some glass next to it. Then I'm going to place down a comparator, redstone, then I'm going to add a carrot the composter and finally i'm just gonna add some note blocks glass rails and finally a trap door so now to make the broken shulker box i just need to place a lectern down that has a book in it then if i place a comparator and finally switch the lectern out with the shulker box i now have a glitched shulker box and the reason you know it's glitched is because you literally can't open it and now before i upgrade my version back i'm gonna be making seven more just in case i break one and now that we've got the shulkers, I just need to make the actual machine, which is actually pretty simple.
And finally, I just need to load the 100,000 cactus into the machine. And I just realized I forgot to get all the coal needed. And since one coal can only smelt eight blocks, that means I need 12,000. 1500 coal well i guess it's time to start getting in manually just kidding i actually have a wither skeleton farm which i'm just gonna afk that for a couple hours And now with the coal obtained, I just need to AFK the farm for about 35 hours. And while I AFK it, let me tell you a bit more about how the farm actually works. So pretty much every time you smelt an item in the furnace and take the item out, you get a small amount of XP. However, if the item is taken out by a hopper, the XP will get stored in the furnace. And when you break it, all the XP gets let out. And that's pretty much what this farm does, but at a much, much much bigger scale and with that being said i'm just gonna finish up the afk session so i'll see you in 35 hours Okay, so all the cactus finally finished smelting, and before I use the machine, I need to do a couple things, such as getting rid of all my levels I got from the wither skeleton farm, and I'm also gonna make a haste too and a regeneration beacon so I don't die. And now to use the machine, I first gotta replace all the hoppers with obsidian to make sure nothing else goes into the furnaces. And now I just need to place a comparator leading into the furnace. Then if I put a stack of furnaces in my offhand while holding a pickaxe and then hold both mouse buttons, the farm will give me an unlimited amount of god particles which is the biggest xp particle in the game and as you can see this farm is insanely fast and it hasn't even been five minutes but i already got level a thousand which shows how fast this farm is but there's no way i'm stopping here i'm gonna go afk for a while and see what level i get so with that being said i'll see you later Okay, so I just finished AFK, and as you can see, I got all the way up to level 20,069. Nice. And I actually got all the levels relatively fast. But anyways, now that I'm done with that farm, I want to let you know that me and Mr. Beast are in a sub race to 300 million subscribers. And as you can see, I'm just a bit behind. Okay, maybe I'm more than just a bit behind. But if you still want to do me a huge favor, make sure to subscribe. I really appreciate all the support, and with that being said, I think it's time to move on to the... And now the time has arrived. The EOL farm, otherwise known as the End of Light farm, the fastest mob farm to ever exist, producing over 2 million drops an hour. And it's super cool. And that's the farm I'm gonna be building, but that's easier said than done. Because as you can imagine, building a farm this fast is no easy task. So that's why I'm gonna be splitting it into six smaller steps. And the first one requires me to dig a massive 272 by 272 hole and since mining all that manually would take hmm let me think years i'm gonna be using flying machines so let's start by finding a place to put the perimeter then i'm gonna be marking the area out and now before i can use the flying machines i just need to clear up all the water since as you already know tnt doesn't work underwater finally i just need to chop down every single tree Okay, and now with the trees removed, we can finally move on to using the flying machines. And to ensure that this process is as quick as possible, I haven't made one flying machine, not two flying machines, not five flying machines, but 10 flying machines, which will ensure this process is as quick as possible. So now all that's left is to start running the machines. And even though I was using 10 flying machines, doing this was still really tedious. Since every time I saw lava or water, I had to go around clearing it up. But several hours later, I had finally finished running the first cycle meaning i just got to rebuild all the machines a lot lower and run them a second time yay Okay, so I'm finally done digging the perimeter, meaning I can move on to the next step, which requires me to destroy over 75,000 bedrock. Let that sink in. I need to destroy 75,000 pieces of what should be an unbreakable block. I got a feeling that this is gonna take a while. Yeah, no, doing it this way is way too slow. So I'm instead going to be building this massive bedrock breaking machine that can destroy an average of one bedrock per second. However, the downside to it is that for every piece of bedrock I want to destroy, I need one piston. And since last time I made this much pistons, it took over three hours. I'm not going to be doing that again. So I'm instead going to build an auto crafter, but not that auto crafter, this auto crafter. It's so fast, it can craft over three and a half 
million blocks per hour. And the materials list is actually really small and simple. And with the auto crafter completely built, we could finally move on to getting all the materials needed to make all the pistons. And since each piston requires nine individual items, that means I'm gonna need 675 thousand items which i can just get from a very long afk session at all my different farms okay and now that i got all the materials i just need to put them into the auto crafter then i just need to sit here and use this mod called the item scroller which lets you craft items with keybinds instead of having to click on the recipe and with that being said i'm just gonna finish up crafting all the pistons and now that I'm done with that, I just need to make the bedrock breaking machines, which as you can see is actually pretty simple. And with the machine built, I just need to AFK it for a few hours, rebuild the machine one block lower, then rinse and repeat the whole process until we can see the void, void, void. Okay, and now with the bedrock destroyed, we can start working on the collection system. And as you can imagine, this thing is chonky. So that means we gotta get some materials. And luckily, most of them are pretty easy to obtain. Well, except the 836 hoppers, the 329 observers, the 238 comparators, and finally, 79 pieces of blue ice. And let's just say, getting all those materials ended up taking a lot longer than it should have. But now that I got all the materials, I just need to line up the portal from the overworld to the nether. And the way to do this is, I first have to get the coordinates from the center of the EOL farm, then divide them by 8. And the reason we do this is because one block in the overworld is equal to 8 in the nether. And after doing that, we found this location. So let's start by clearing up the area. And now it's time to build the storage system. And as you can see, this thing is massive! But it's not like size always matters. <clears throat> Anyways, to finish the storage system off, I just need to downgrade back to 1.18 so I can slice this portal so the mobs will just fall straight down. And with that complete, I'm gonna update back so we can start working on the next step, which is building a bat switch. And the reason we have to do this is because the collection system kills mobs with fall damage. And since bats fly, they won't fall, meaning it'll just cause an extreme amount of lag. So with that being said, we need materials to make an update suppressor and a light suppressor. And the good thing about the update suppressor is that the only material i need is loads of powered rails and instead of making them manually yeah this way is a lot better now finally i just need to get the materials for the light suppressor which are sadly a bit more annoying to obtain so with the power of editing magic all the materials have magically appeared and now before i actually build the suppressors i need to light up the caves around so bats won't spawn in them and instead of using torches i'm gonna be using light blocks that i got in the previous video okay and now with the cave lit up i can downgrade my world and start building the bat switch and the first step to actually making it is making this huge update suppressor because sadly the small one i was using earlier won't work next i also need to build a light suppressor at the build limit so the portals won't emit any lights after splicing them and now to actually make the bat switch we first gotta cover the obsidian so there won't be any light then i gotta turn on the light suppressor and wait about five to ten minutes why you may ask and to that i say i got no idea But now that I've AFK'd it for a decent amount, I can destroy the sandstone, build a nether portal, and if I built the suppressor properly, I should be able to destroy this piece of obsidian, place a rail, flick this lever, destroy this other piece of obsidian, and finally, to destroy the last piece of obsidian, I just need to connect it to the update suppressor using some signs. Finally, I just gotta do that five more times. So, yeah, on second thoughts, I'm not doing that. But would you look at that? The bat switch is complete. And using a mod, you can see that the obsidian is at light level zero which is how you know i did it right and now with the working bat switch we can move on to probably the easiest step of the farm which is me just making the base of the farm that consists of about 2000 obsidian that i got before i downgraded and finally i also need to make a glazed terracotta floor which i also got the materials for before i downgraded and that's literally it that's the fifth step complete meaning we can move on to the final step of the whole process which is slicing all the portals and before i do that i need to make a huge sandstone platform so it blocks out the sunlight 
Anyways, the next thing I gotta do is make this arm that'll connect the update suppressor to the EOL. And now to actually use it, I just need to turn on the update suppressor, extend the obsidian one to the left, and build a nether portal. And now I should be able to splice it. Oh that's not supposed to happen and little did i know this would be the most time consuming problem of the whole video and no i'm not kidding when i say i spent over six hours trying to figure out the problem in the creative world but no matter what i did i couldn't get that side of the update suppressor to work and you want to know what the problem ended up being yeah Anyways, now that I got all the problems solved, I just need to splice the portals. And I already knew this was going to be a rough ride, because from what I've heard, splicing all the portals takes about 20 hours. But I just put my head down, watched some YouTube, and finished splicing every single portal. Also, there were some spots where placing the glass would just completely break the nether portal, so I just ignored them. But now that I'm done splicing all the portals, I just need to clear up the area around it. And now, last but not least, I just need to add some glass and turtle eggs around the EOL, which I also got earlier. And that's officially the fastest mob farm to ever exist, complete. And as you can see, this farm more than earns the title of the world's fastest mob farm. So with that being said, that's how I built every illegal farm in Minecraft without corrupting my world. Oh...